Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our All Candidates presentation for the Township of Asphodel, Norwood. I'll be your host, J. Marie Jones, tonight, and uh, our goal here is to be as open and transparent and fair as possible to all the candidates who have their name in for the upcoming municipal election. And, of course, it's... Uh, not an easy thing to do for many people. We need to congratulate everyone who puts their name forth to uh, serve their community in this way. So we are going to move forward. We'll get some of the ground rules uh, out of the way. Now, all local candidates have indeed been invited to tonight's Zoom meeting. Everyone was invited. We do have six candidates who will be with us tonight. And uh, they include now, uh, I believe Patrick Wilford is not not on board. I'm not seeing his name uh, anywhere to be found. So we uh, tonight are welcoming Paula War. If you want to give us a little wave so we know everyone. Good. Thank you, Paula. Roger Bono. Roger. Michael Bolt. Michael, thank you. Stephanie Hodge Graves. Stephanie, thank you for being with us. And Barry Walsh. Barry, thank you. Now, uh, Gregory Bloom, also a candidate for mayor, is not with us tonight. And Lori Burt, who was acclaimed as deputy mayor, also sends her regrets. So, before we get started, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that we are meeting virtually on the land that we're speaking from and discussing tonight is the Treaty 20 Michisagi Territory in the traditional territory of the Michisagi and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nation, which include Alderville, Beausoleil, Curve Lake, Georgina Island, Hiawatha, Rama, and Scugog Island First Nations. We offer our gratitude to the Williams Treaty First Nations as the stewards and the caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. Okay, we're not going to dilly-dally a lot. We do have a laundry list of questions that we're going to ask all the candidates. They'll be given uh, a minute to respond to questions. Uh, they're going to begin by each giving two minutes to address the audience and say what you would like about yourself and why you're running and all those good things. Uh, when we get to the question period, each candidate will be given one minute and uh, you will be timed. You'll see the timer in the middle of the screen. And then uh, after our questions at the very end of the night, you'll be given another two minutes to address the audience and again, wrap up what you would like to say. So that's basically it. Uh, we do have some timekeepers going on from the chamber. Uh, Olivia and Lindsay are, are pushing the buttons and they're looking after the, the timing. You'll get a, a wave when it's uh, just about over so you can wrap up. We're not going to be that strict, but try your best to stay with the time frame. Okay, now... We have made a list of candidates uh, in a certain order. We, we made a draw, and that is the order. And then we will reverse that order as we go through the questions so everyone will get a fair shot. So the way it's going to work tonight for questions and for presentations, Paula War, then Roger, then Michael, then Stephanie, and then Barry, and then we'll change that order as we move through. Okay, without any further ado, here we go with uh, two minutes for each candidate, and we look forward to your comments. We're going to start with Paula War. Hi. Just testing for a second. Um, hello, I'm Paula War, and I'm running for re-election as councillor in Asphodel Norwood Township. I've come to realize 
the most important things that affect my everyday life happen right here in Asphodel, Norwood. And over the past four years as counselor, I've continued to be a voice of what matters within our community. No one expected COVID and its aftermath. It did highlight one thing. Rural Ontario requires reliable, affordable, high-speed internet. Zoom and other formats allowed our council to pivot and provide municipal services, but truly it's our in-person interactions that allow residents to feel connected and informed. So how do we continue to make this a vibrant and growing community? I believe strong communities are built with dedicated partnerships. We are stronger when we work together. I believe by showcasing our beautiful township, highlighting local businesses while celebrating our rural roots helps draw new opportunities to our township. I spent most of the life, my life in this area. It's my heritage and I care deeply about the land and the people who live here. I understand we will be tackling important issues such as inflation, affordable housing, infrastructure, sustainable growth, rural health care, attracting businesses. It's a long list. I believe my extensive knowledge of our township, committee work and council duties have prepared me to bring energy and problem solving to the table. Let's continue to keep this township viable and vibrant now and in the future. Thank you, I'm Paula War. Thank you very much, Paula. Very good timing. Our next speaker is Roger Bono. Roger. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am Roger Bono, your incumbent mayor who is seeking your election on October 24th. I wish to thank the Chamber for organizing this event. To start, I will say I love this community and want to see it thrive for all the right reasons. I was elected as Deputy Mayor in 2014 during a time of change and unease. A high turnover rate in staff, infrastructure was failing, projects were unfunded, we were stagnant. Needless to say, the corporation needed a fresh direction. Since that time, an organizational review took place that realigned positions for efficiencies and cost savings. It created positions in places where there were gaps. It adopted a staff retention policy, adopted a council code of conduct policy, and created a team that could focus on the business of the corporation and the needs to the taxpayers. The next step was to adopt a five-year infrastructure plan. This included sidewalks, bridges, surface treatments, guardrails, parks, playgrounds, and green spaces. All these plans are vital to ensuring that the township is compliant with asset management legislation. Without these plans, we wouldn't get a grant. Taxpayers can learn in a transparent way where we are headed. They are all available on our website. While working towards these much needed goals, the entire globe was hit with a pandemic that knocked the wind out of all of us. It was hard. Did we struggle? Yes. Did we please everyone with every decision? No, but I can assure you that the team of council and staff worked around the clock in the early days to ensure the township safety while balancing the difference of opinion amongst our community and our staff. A lot of the time we were the messenger following the provincial or public health directions or recommendations, which is a difficult position to be in. And other times we were doing what we felt was in the best interest of the public. Not an easy job, but one we took seriously and one that caused many sleepless nights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roger. Michael Bolt, two minutes, please. Welcome and good evening to all residents and candidates of Ashford El Norwood. My name is Michael Bolt and thank you for joining. I would like to start with the observation that Ashford El Norwood over the last 15 years since I came here has uh, come a long ways. So with a growing population, uh, we are able to have a more diverse new businesses opening and staying open. Uh, of course, our current businesses are uh, established and, and they are growing and flourishing as well. However, we always have room for improvement. As our suburban areas continue to grow, we need to ensure connectivity with our business area. This can be achieved with accessible walking and biking paths throughout the village. This will free up parking for those who are driving in from the rural areas, will reduce our emissions and the health and well-being of our community. Working in conjunction with the active transportation plan issued by Peterborough County, we need to create safe walk crossings for pedestrians and cyclists uh, across our county roads. Creating these will link together our community to our residential uh, area. 
I would like to further investigate other ways to advertise for our local businesses as well. Most of our traffic comes through Highway 7, therefore some of our local businesses are not seen. It's important for the businesses that are off the beaten path to have some visibility and exposure on those main road, uh, as those on the main road. These three points, uh, connectivity, safe crossing and advertising is what I believe our next steps are in helping and improving our local business community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stephanie Hodge Graves. Go ahead, Stephanie. Hi, thank you to the organizers and to the audience members and fellow participants. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am a resident, a returning resident to Aspidal Norwood. I grew up here as a child, graduated high school. I moved away for about 15 years, 20, including university. I lived in a diverse, I lived in England. I lived in a large city. And I decided to move home. I wanted to live back in a rural lifestyle, back in a smaller community, back where it is a place that your children can go on the street and not have to worry about them. Uh, what prompted me to run for council is I think the township's doing many, many great things. I think what I have felt uh, is that we need to work as a township on communicating earlier and engaging residents a little bit more. I don't have an action plan. I want to, I have been speaking to the people and I want to be a, a true representative of what the township is looking for. I think the most important thing is that the township residents, business owners and community members feel like they are heard and that they are engaged in earlier stages of discussions. I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I think there's, there are many wonderful things as a, and uh, we have lots of new residents. And as a person who's been sort of both an old resident and a new resident, I'm looking at and thinking of ways to engage new people into getting into our community and um, joining, joining all the fun. And that's, uh, that's me, Stephanie Hodge Greaves. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Barry Walsh, Barry. Yes, good evening residents. Uh, my name is Barry Walsh and I'm running for councillor in Asphodel Norwood Township. Uh, I'd like to thank the Peterborough uh, and Kortha Chamber of Commerce for putting this evening on and for people joining in in this virtual event. Uh, I have been a long time 50 plus year resident of this township. Uh, I currently reside on County Road 38 with my wife Maureen of 35 years and I'm actually where we raised our three sons. Uh, I am currently employed with Manitoba Harvest Hemp Foods as a National Account Manager for Canada and basically work from home. I have been an Asphodel and Norwood Councillor since May of 2019 and wish to continue to serve this great community. Residents have asked me, well, I've been out canvassing. Why, why vote for you? Well, in, in my mind, there's a few things. I wish to see projects completed that our current council were part, were part of starting, and those include items like the fitness center uh, and from the community center and the all wheels park. These were are both amazing projects that are well underway. And again, they came from listening to what the residents in our community wanted and we are delivering those to the residents. We have excitement with a new water tower standpipe in 2023 that is supported by federal and provincial funding where we have worked tremendously well in a team together with them. We need to continue to address the healthcare needs in our community, and that is by adding additional healthcare providers to the team. Proactively managing the continued growth in our community by balancing government mandate to grow, developer needs, and required infrastructure upgrades. Being part of a team that has been financially responsible over the years, that included a very, mos very modest 0.91% municipal tax rate hike in 2022, despite continued cost pressures. I pride myself on being a good team leader and bring a business-like approach to my role in council. I look forward to all the virtual, all candidate discussion and welcome all your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And everyone was right on the money with their, uh, their time on, so thank you. Okay, what we will be doing now is getting into the question period. And as we said, each candidate will be given one minute to uh, answer the question to the best of their ability at the very end of the meeting, you'll be given two minutes to do, uh, to do a wrap up. Now we do encourage those who are watching, if you do have a question, uh, 
You can use the Q&A feature on Zoom to ask it. Matter of fact, we have a, a question in already, and I think I'm going to start with that. And the first person on our list this time will be Roger Bono to uh, answer the question. And here's the question. With the increase in residents from larger metro areas like Toronto, how will you support an increase in diversity to our township? Roger, one minute. Well, thank you for the question. Um, diversity has never been a problem in our township. Um, we've accepted people from all different uh, walks of life and all different religions. And I just, I can't think of being in a, a more diverse township than Aspinall Norwood, to be honest with you. Um, even back in the early days of school, I mean, we had a colored family in town. They were well-respected. Uh, they were athletes. Um, just diversity has never been an issue here. And uh, we welcome people with open arms. The most that I can say to people in town, though, with the new residents is never forget to say hello as you're walking by to someone because they may not feel as welcome as what we want them to be. So thank you very much. Thank you, Roger. Michael Ball. Yes, I would like to um, encourage all residents to come out for any activities or sports that we have going on. Um, they can join in. Uh, we have multiple uh, different churches within our community. Um, our schools are very diverse, uh, accepting um, all people. Um, yes, and I would uh, tag on what Roger said uh, as you pass along, say hello. Uh, very friendly neighbor that we have in the residents in Norwood. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie. One thing I enjoy doing is asking people to be involved. I like to make sure that people feel that they are truly welcome at, at committees or fair board meetings or a skating club. And I think uh, I agree we should say hi and meet new people, but I also do feel it's important to go the next step and to try and, and ask people to, to join committees and ask people to join sports. And it is difficult to approach any new person um, from anywhere. But I think that's the, the thing. Um, having returned to the area after being away, I did find it hard to integrate, even though I had grown up here. So I do feel that I can appreciate how isolated some new families would feel. And I think a great place to start is our libraries. They are very diverse in their um, programming, and they're a very safe, welcoming space for everyone. And I would encourage everyone to just start by visiting the library. And that would be it. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Barry Walsh. Yeah, I think I'll just build upon what has basically been commented on by, by all the candidates to date. I feel we are a very open, uh, diverse community. Uh, for example, recently we had a, uh, a Norwood Pride event that was actually held in our community center park uh, where we welcomed, uh, you know, welcomed them with open arms. Uh, I do agree. Uh, we are always been known as a friendly town. We need to keep asking, you know, say hello to people, asking them, um, you know, to feel part of the community. I'm also a member of our local Lions Club. We're always looking for new members. So it's a great way for, for new people to get involved. To Stephanie's point, we have a great library system in our community. We have a number of church groups, a number of other organizations. And I think I, I will impress upon all those organizations to reach out to our new residents and, and make them feel welcome and, and want to be part of this community. Thank you very much, Barry. And Paula. Um, thank you. I, I agree with everyone's uh, comments so far. There is another opportunity that I feel that maybe uh, we lack as a township, and that's inviting everyone to join some of the committees that will be um, up for reappointment in November. And there's many ways to become involved um, with what we do um, as a township, and those include the library board, um, the cemetery board, the uh, cultural and heritage committee. Uh, there's opportunities where I think that all voices need to be heard, and uh, it's a great way that we can um, bring that voice to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paula. Okay, we're going to move to another question. Michael Bolt will be the first to give his answer. 
How do you see your township growing and developing over the next four years? Michael. I think it's very important that we have um, a wide range of affordable housing uh, mixed in with our townships, uh, with our, our, uh, our subdivisions that are being built. Um, most of what we have now is detached, but I believe that we need to see some uh, more affordable houses for the younger families trying to, to get out of the out of the rent situation. I also believe that, uh, as stated earlier, um, we need to have more bike and cyclist paths to make linking all the different parts of our community, um, link them all together, the business section, each subdivision, the schools, the churches. I think we need to see more connectivity with uh, what than we currently have, especially with um, all these new subdivisions going in uh, in different various places within our, our community. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And a reminder to everyone, if you need me to repeat the question, sometimes, you know, you get carried away with what was the original question. Please, all you just ask and I'll repeat it. So the question is, how do you see your township growing and developing over the next four years? Stephanie. The township is, is growing. Uh, there's new houses being built. There's the next phase being developed. Um, I will definitely agree with Michael on the issue of connectivity, the active transport, trying to get more things connected so that people can walk more easily. Uh, we do have a good trail system, but that's more of a leisure trail system. Um, I, I do believe that the, as it is in the official plan that, that any further development should be restrained contained within the settlement area to preserve our rural lifestyle and preserve food, preserve the farmland. I believe very strongly in that. I think we sometimes take for granted the land that we have. And I do think that um, we need to make sure that we protect what I move back for, the rural lifestyle, the clean air, the big spaces. And dense, densification of housing is, is excellent. It makes it more affordable. and. Um, is a better use of the land that's already been used for housing. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Barry Walsh. Yeah, I, um, my response would be as, as I watch the growth that has happened so far in our community, we have worked closely with developers. It's, it really has been done in stages. We have planned it in stages so that we can kind of keep infrastructure following along, following along with it. We have been able to work very closely with our developers in terms of them understanding that as we grow and need more infrastructure that we can't rely on our current tax base to basically pay for that. And we've had good relationships with builders to date knowing that they, they need to help support that in terms of bringing their, their checkbook to the table to help actually pay for that growth. Um, if I look at some of the new developments that are coming up and for example, up in phase four, uh, Peterborough homes, there will be some townhomes being added to, to that, and there certainly is requests from the provincial government to continue to add other types of housing outside of just single homes. Uh, and I think lastly, it's just uh, as we grow, we just need to all work together dealing with congestion and connectivity in the town. So thank you. Thank you, Barry. Paula. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, building on what everyone else has been saying, uh, yes, uh, meeting density targets within the settlement areas, it's something that, um, you know, the provincial government with more homes, more choice has certainly been, when has been pushing for smaller communities. Uh, it's also the second dwellings that they're now allowing uh, to build, and that may help some of the housing shortage by having second dwellings built on those um, larger plots where, where we do need more afford affordable homes, that's for sure. And there are, um, in the next phases, condo developments and um, a row housing style homes that are um, being planned for the next phase of development, and it's needed. Um, it, there's never been a more time, a time where younger, um, younger adults, they cannot afford homes. So it's, uh, it's definitely been identified in our area. Thank you. Roger. Thank you. Uh, I'll go on a little bit uh, on a different angle. Uh, you said about growing and, and developing. Um, so if we're going to develop, it's like the chicken and the egg. If you don't have the people here, then, then the businesses aren't going to come to invest. 
So that's the other part of uh, developing in our township is, is having some form of jobs and uh, uh, creation of uh, commercial industrial coming this way too. So I, like I've said, when I was out canvassing, if it wasn't for some of the new people out there in the, in the phase one, two, and three, we may not even have a drive through uh, A&W here as of yet. I mean, that was a $5 million investment or, or even better than that. And for that amount of money that you need the people here in order to make that work. So I'm in total agreement with everyone about uh, that we need more affordable homes and uh, the townhomes that are coming in the next few developments, uh, they'll show that and uh, hopefully we have a good response from the people out there. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Roger. So we've been uh, around the loop. Now I must, I must admit, uh, I'm a little bit, who, who would be next? Who went first last time? Stephanie did. Okay, Barry is next. Yeah. This is like- No, actually. Okay. No, I was, okay. I was putting my hand up to be the person who spoke next. Michael went first last time. Okay, gotcha. Now you got me back on track. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, our next question. Many residents and businesses are struggling with slow an unstable internet. What will you do to ensure everyone has the proper high-speed internet? Woo, we'll go. I am aware that there is um, an organization or a, a government entity that is working on this issue. I think it's important to continue to uh, sorry, continue to work with the existing suppliers of our internet, because I do live in the rural part of the world, and uh, we are very fortunate, but it, it is affected by weather uh, and other things, uh, but on the whole, it's been okay, but I, I am aware there's a, a government organization that is, is working towards bringing this to the town, and I think it's about just making sure that we have access to the funding, we are eligible for whatever assistance there is and to be able to um, help our residents gain access to the internet, um, fast speed internet as quickly as possible. Thank, Thank you, you, Stephanie. Barry. Yeah, and actually I'll just really just build upon what uh, what Stephanie has said. There is an organization, Jay, which I believe you're part of, the, the EORN, uh, the Eastern Ontario Regional Network, which is really helping to try and drive more in, more rural and faster internet in the rural areas. Uh, I think it's important that we stay in communication with that group. We look for any local opportunities that can come along with that organization as they continue to drive it forward. And I think lastly, one of the things that our current council has done is we do have a cell phone tower policy in place that again, we're open to having towers in our community as long as they're obviously in the right places, but we are open for business in terms of uh, wanting to allow towers to be built in our community because ultimately it's gonna support our residents with high-speed internet. Thank you, Barry. Paula? Uh, yes, I can only build on that um, as uh, experiencing firsthand my face frozen on every screen from a council meeting. I thought I was gonna make Christmas cards one time with my face frozen on the screen. Um, but there is a new tower project that's going to be done, I believe down in the Southern part of our township near Birdsall. And uh, that's coming up uh, in, the, in the coming uh, council meetings. And you know, it's important that people know the problems that rural uh, residents have with internet. Like we may be in a rural area, but we have a global perspective and we have businesses that are trying to sell their products or do business all over the world. And so I think just continuing to bring that um, educational portion to everyone that we are really struggling, whether it's homeschooling, whether it's your uh, Zoom meeting, we, we need rural internet and we need it now. Roger, you're muted there. Oh, sorry, I was waiting for you to say something, sir. Sorry, Roger, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just, uh, just to add on to a few things there, um, we're one of the luckier uh, townships that uh, uh, our staff and our council, we ad advocate through the, uh, the governments and they listen. 
uh, Kinga Surma, the Minister of Infrastructure, uh, we're gonna have a meeting with her to talk about broadband in our area. Uh, so this is already in the works that uh, we're gonna have something met up, with, meet up with her. And uh, uh, we've, we've had ministers in our townships before here and uh, we have good response from them and uh, we lobby well and uh, they do listen. And that's all I can say to add on to that, that, that uh, EORN, which is the, uh, for the regional network, uh, with the county, um, we're doing great things. It just takes time and the people have to be patient also. And that you do want the internet, you want cell service, but you also have to have a tower in place that has lights on it. So there, there's a give and take. So I don't know where to go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Michael. Yes, well, I, that answer, that uh, question has been answered uh, very well by all the candidates already. Um, I can only really add that, yes, uh, during the homeschooling and the virtual schooling, it was uh, quite a quite a challenge for all, a lot of kids out there. Um, but I will add on that, um, of course, we do know that Starlink is becoming more and more available too to our different areas, and that's a very high speed internet option for uh, our rural area, as we do have um, cable and fiber throughout the residential area in Norwood. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question, we start with Barry this time. You'll have to excuse me if I lose my place here. It's, uh, you, you get listening and you, you forget where you are. But anyway, we'll do our best. Barry, you're up next. And here is the question. What is your stance on allowing ATVs on public roads? Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, um, at this point, uh, we are waiting for the county to make a final decision on their um, bylaw regarding ATV uh, and off-road vehicles on township roads. From my perspective, if we have a controlled bylaw that allows them in and around certain areas of our village, it's a way for to help our businesses with gas sales, with food sales, you know, possibly other things they need to come into town for long as they learn and understand the need to drive responsible. Uh, I, I have no problem with allowing um, off-road and ATV vehicles being part of our community because it is a way to support and help our businesses as long as it's being done responsible. Thank you. Paula? Um, yes, just to build on what Barry has said, um, I, I would like to see um, any uh, potential insurance cost increases that may come with allowing ATVs on the road. But we have um, taken a look at a route that will connect um, Autonomy South Monaghan, uh, and then it would be uh, our township, and then, in, and then going east to the trails east. And the one nice thing about doing a trial is that it's a trial. Let's see if it will work. Let's see if people are responsible on the roads that are allowed to be on. And there are roads that they can't go on. Like, you know, a, a County Road 38, for just an example, it's too busy. Um, and it's one that would not allow ATVs. So if there are proper routes with proper care, proper um, and policing, um, I'm all for having a trial run and see if it will work within our township. Thank you, Paula. Roger. Thank you. Um, first of all, the, the province is allowing this to happen uh, in most cases, and we don't have a lot of say over certain things. So um, as far as ATVs that are running the streets in town, um, it's it could be no different than a skidoo, say if it's licensed and they're helmeted and, and they're of age to do the job and they have insurance. Um, We've had some bad characters in our village as in any other village that we've heard about through county council. And they're the bad apples that are in the tree basically that are making it bad for everyone else. So I'd have to say that the OPP are well aware of what's going on in our areas. And uh, just that having four wheelers, there's not such a bad thing. We, are, we could be a connecting link to Trent Hills onto uh, um, Havelock Belmont uh, it, it could be an economic driver if it's done proper. And like Paula said, it's just a trial. Thank you. Thank you. Michael. Yes, um, building on what Paula and Roger have already said, uh, most of the townships around us uh, have allowed it now, and we would be the connecting um, for the trail system. 
Uh, it would boost our sales within our local businesses, which is very great. The only issue I would uh, have is that the they be a proper age and insured and following the speed limit, but also that they do not go over certain decibels with their with how loud they are through the village. Um, many times, uh, my own children have been asleep and something goes by very, very quite loud and uh, that should be pleased as well. But on the whole, I think it could be a very good benefit for our, our, our community. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And Stephanie. I have, I have real concerns about the safety um, of this. I mean, it, the speed that they can travel on roads uh, seems overwhelming at times. Um, I guess it, it actually isn't different than a motorcycle. It, it just feels different. Uh, and also the, the volume of them and the, when I, the, uh, sadly, the only use of ATVs that I've seen on roads has been quite dangerous driving. So I would definitely want it to be investigated and understood. And then policing, um, you know, the dangerous behaviors. It was only recently that two golf carts have overturned. And I know that's different, but it's similar issue. Two golf carts have overturned and, and at least one person has died. So it, to me, it's not exactly a slippery slope, but it definitely is something that needs to be managed and the volume and the, the dangerous behavior has to definitely has to be policed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay, our next question and Paula, you will be first on this one. And here is the question. What are your infrastructure priorities for the township? Paula. Oh, there, there's, uh, there's a few and there's uh, many that uh, we have talked about the, the one that probably is the biggest would be uh, the building of the new standpipe. And we have received funding for um, a large portion of it, but that will be um, something that will impact the growth. Um, and the potential growth in our community with that standpipe, which is the new water tower being built. So th that's uh, one of them. And I, I think um, some of the infrastructure that we, we have had done is, um, has been really great, like having the center line repaved. But that funding, uh, when it becomes available, smaller communities like us, we have to take uh, advantage of getting that funding from the provincial and federal funding to be allow us to do these infrastructure projects. So I think continuing to get those funding streams is also important to drive infrastructure. Thank you very much. Roger. Thanks, sir. I just, uh, you know, there's so many different projects that we have on the go and, and so many more that, that need to be done, um, including uh, sidewalks and, and Standpipe was one of the main ones that we recognized through the, uh, the fire department basically said that our storage limit was at a certain height there. And if we had a disaster, we'd have a problem. So, but our asset management plan drives our infrastructure needs and, and that ensures uh, proactive, not reactive development. Um, so we have to be careful on how we do things. There is a plan out there that we have, um, but right now surface treatments, making sure that the roads are safe, uh, not too slippery for people when they come to a stop sign, having signs that are illuminated properly, having proper street lights where they need to be, some dark areas. It's all involved in trying to keep the township safe for our residents. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. The question is, what are your infrastructure priorities for the township? Michael. Yes, uh, Paula said it perfectly with the, uh, the and Roger said it with the water. I, I would also like to add on top of that. Yes, uh, as mentioned before, bike paths, walking paths. I would also like to make sure that when new subdivisions go in, there's proper roadways so that not just one road uh, will be inundated with all the traffic going to that subdivision so that there's multiple entrances into new subdivisions um, to not overwhelm what's there. Um, uh, also, um, any any sort of a repavement or road uh, 
extensions so that none go to an, uh, a current county road as well. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. I think the township, <clears throat> excuse me, has quite a lot of infrastructure plans already in place. Um, I'm not a believer in just changing things for the sake of it. Uh, the roads are being managed quite well. Personally, what the one thing I have not understood is the cost of roads. And that's something that I'm quite intrigued to learn about. I live on a road that has always been not paved and it's now being paved. And to me, it seems like a lot of money to pave it and to put down all the gravel to surface treat it. Um, because I would prefer to, personally, I would prefer to live on a quieter road that once we pave them, people drive faster. That's my issue. But in terms of the infrastructure, I understand that it's safer or it's easier to man maintain perhaps. I also think that we should look at our parks and recreation facilities and increase some of our infrastructure for um, perhaps some public toilets so that people can take longer picnics and breaks and perhaps get people to start parking in our village for example, on the Begs lot, Begs lot, formerly Begs lot behind the town hall so that people could make Norwood a, literally a pit stop. That's what would be a good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Barry. You're muted, Barry. Sorry, everybody. Um, for me, one of the, the one that's gonna come to fruition probably by next summer, uh, will be our new water tower, which is you know certainly certainly needed. Uh, we've had uh, engineering surveys done. Uh, we certainly need wastewater upgrades done as we continue to grow in our community. Uh, I think I look within each of the different departments. They're always budgeting five years out and determining what items they need uh, to keep their different departments growing. Uh, so I look at roads and parks. Uh, we've always been proactive to make sure we understand what their current and future needs are so that we are uh, we are budgeting and being prepared for those. And I think lastly is uh, we're uh, just to build on that we're always identifying, you know, where we need um, new infrastructure and, and we always have shelf ready projects ready to go whenever funding streams come along that when the funding stream uh, arrives, we're ready and, and ready to go after that funding. Thank you, Barry. Okay, time to move on to another question. This is another one we've received live from one of our viewers. And here's the question. Roger, you will lead off. How will you support and advocate for a municipal system that would remove zoning barriers to affordable housing and streamline the development process for Habitat for Humanity, nonprofit entities, and the building community. Roger. Thank you. Well, first of all, I've always said we're open for business. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that. And the first thing that I would say that anyone that wanted to come to do a development is come and talk to our building official. Um, like I said, we're open for business. We're willing to take on anything and everything just about. Um, and as far as any kind of developments concerned, whether it's uh, affordable housing or not, then we're, we're open, we have open door policy here. So all we're asking is for people, if they want to invest, that would be great. Um, we'll try to find some room for you somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Michael? Yeah, there's not much more to be said than that. Uh, Roger uh, said it perfectly. Um, it would, I would love to see um, some more information regarding it and, and uh, a a proposition for um, what that kind of organization would plan in the community. There's, um, like Roger said, there's the doors are open for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. As a non incumbent counselor, I can't speak directly to the details of so much as Roger has uh, has much experience. So I, I, reading the answers, I mean, streamlining processes is not a bad thing uh, in general. Um, my only hesitation is that it needs to be done transparently and it needs to be an open process where the neighbors are 
engaged and actively communicated with in whatever you're discussing, whatever zoning changes there are, whatever streamlining of any kind of process. And yes, we do need more affordable homes. Um, and I think that's just, we need more affordable homes. And yes, to streamline is great, but it must be a transparent process with options for neighbors to have a say in the process and community. We are a democracy and we do need to engage with each other and we need to have discussions in a collaborative way and not just push everything through. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Barry. Yeah, I think I honestly, I can just build upon what has been commented by uh, all the candidates so far. We really do truly have an open door policy. We feel we are open to business. We're open to look at basically all options that, again, make sense and are the right fit for our community. feel we're very flexible in that approach uh, to, to meet uh, with what, whatever type of developments are out there. And, and I would say that we do have, I feel, a very open process. Whenever there is development happening in a specific area, we always are making sure that neighbors in that area are made aware of what's happening. Uh, they're always invited to a public meeting to be part of whenever there's a zoning bylaw being done and moving that project forward. So definitely to Stephanie's point, we want to continue that. People do need to know what's happening in their in their local area. Thank you. Paula. Well, I agree with every what everyone has been saying, but I'd like to take it one step farther because if we are going to, and I think we do have an open door policy for builders, um, let's have them build green as well. And building green is costly, but for affordable housing in the long run, it actually saves people money that um, are in those housing. So maybe um, looking at incentives for net zero ready construction and re, uh, let's research the possibility of offering rebates or on building projects if, this, uh, if these building projects uh, meet the required greenhouse reduction targets. And so maybe it's a win-win. We get some affordable housing, but in the long run, the people that buy those houses are also have lower costs involved in upkeeping them. Thank you, Paula. I'm seeing a hand up, Roger, for a rebuttal. No more than 30 seconds, please. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to say that our zoning bylaw, uh, our official plan drives this for, for sure how this works, but uh, mm -hmm. our zoning bylaw, I believe, is going to come up in our next term of council that we will be talking about more things like this. So just that's my rebuttal. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. And Michael, you will be first. What transportation needs does the township need to address? Michael. Sorry, can you repeat that again? What transportation needs does the township need to address? Well, uh, I'm not sure exactly what this question is asking, but if it's in terms of the busy streets that we have going through Norwood uh, as 7 and 45 or 40, um, that uh, that we need to have more crosswalks uh, available. Uh, as I did, um, I've talked to residents and, and that wasn't an issue. Um, if this is in terms of transportation around the village, um, again, I come back to um, the active transportation plan that Peterborough County has put out where we have more bike and more walking paths throughout the village connecting it. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie. In terms of transportation, I, I mean, we have no public transportation as far as I'm aware in the township. Um, I think in terms of infrastructure, a greater accessibility of walking, connecting or advertising. I mentioned the parking lot adjacent to the town hall. That's a beautiful parking lot for all the residents to use. And if you think about the size of downtown Norwood, the core, if you parked it at that parking lot, you can walk to the hardware store and the grocery store in the same distance as a Costco. And I think it's perhaps reframing for some of our residents how to get around our town a little bit more in terms of that. Um, I know that the roads are very busy and that people want more crosswalks and safer crosswalks, but I, I do understand the limitations of Highway 7 cutting right through our, our the main village 
that is a challenge because we don't manage, we are not able to manage that uh, on a local level. Uh, and yeah, I believe trying to get more active transport and people being able to walk a little bit more. Thank you. Barry. I'm really, I'm just going to build upon what I believe Michael started with, uh, just, you know, connectivity around town. Um, you know, we, we have a, a great trail uh, up by our transfer station. Uh, could we find other ways to build trails around town? We do have a, a bit of a walking track over around the community center. So just, again, trying to create connectivity around town. Uh, just to build upon what Stephanie said, traffic congestion, we understand it with Highway 7. Um, certainly this summer it's been busier than maybe the last couple summers with more people traveling um, with, with less COVID concerns. But again, um, I think for myself, we just really need to understand how we can work with the, with the MTO and, and, and look at various ways that we can help assist with traffic congestion coming through our town because it has got busier over the last couple of years. And just quickly, the last point, uh, I know our mayor has been working through the county and the city looking at looking at a busing opportunity for residents in our town that maybe don't have transportation to get to Peterborough, that this would be a way that we can potentially offer a, a service to residents in the future. Thank you, Barry. Paula. Uh, yes, thanks. Just building on uh, what everyone has been saying, um, rural residents have few options uh, for traveling by bus or rail. And I think that one thing um, as part of council, I welcome the proposed federal government's promise of an electrified railway that's going to service Eastern Ontario, Peterborough to Ottawa. Um, it's just another link that we need to, uh, to support our residents trying to get um, back and, and forth. Um, an, another thing that we sometimes forget um, the seniors uh, within our community, and we have community care drivers that help take residents to doctor's appointments and other appointments. And I think that there's a need and a call for volunteers um, to, to help that organization because they really do help people that are in no position to be able to drive themselves. And so sometimes we have to reach out to um, committees and other groups to help us identify the problems within our own community. Let's, let's listen to what they have to say as well. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Yeah, thank you, uh, great comments by everyone. Um, I do believe sidewalks and connectivity to our village is, is, is a high priority also. I want to jump on the bus thing though. Let's get on the bus. Um, we passed a motion in council that staff were able to talk with uh, city staff of Peterborough for busing to come our way. And we've had chats with our MPP between and that uh, they may be allowed to, uh, or he may give us a letter of intent to say that he is interested in having a bus route come down from there for our seniors and for our vulnerable. Uh, just to make appointments and, and to make ends meet. I mean, if you have to have an appointment in the city and take a cab, it's like fifty dollars now. It's it's insane as what what the costs are. You can't afford another car for a child or insurance. So we're doing the best that we can, and uh, with support out there, we could get advertisement on the bus to help pay some of the costs too. So there, there's a lot of options that we can work on, and it's hard to say just over one minute. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to allow for a 30 second comment. Stephanie, go ahead. This comment that ties back to the infrastructure comments I made as well. I understand the roadworks and the ongoing roadworks, but what I have observed in center line and the work that's being done on my own road is that what we're, what we're gaining on a smoother surface, we're actually losing for pedestrians. And I think that's something that we do need to address throughout the the township roads is that it's not as safe anymore to walk on the side of our roads because the ditches are quite are quite deep and it's something that I think we we do need to be looking at. Thank you. I'm sorry, I was muted. Stephanie will be first for the next question. How should the township engage local businesses? to help meet climate change goals and move toward net zero emissions. Stephanie, you're first. I think everything starts with a conversation. We need to actively go out to the businesses and engage them 
one on one wherever possible and look at what they where the biggest areas of their emissions and carbon areas are pollution pardon me if i'm using the wrong words and and figure out how best to support that and look for funding help them gain access to funding i do know that i was recently on an agricultural tour and farmers use a lot of resources and we need them to use a lot of resources and it's about helping them transition to perhaps safer or greener not safer but greener alternatives to that and that would require a lot of um, funding most likely from other levels of government to help them transition into a greener um, a greener work environment thank you thank you stephanie barry yeah, I'm, and I'm really, I'm just going to build exactly on what, what Stephanie said. Climate change, if, if people don't feel climate change is happening, you just need to, to watch the last, you know, from May 20, the May storm that we had with through our township to what's happening in the East Coast right now. But I think, honestly, it is, it's having those conversations with our businesses, understanding what their concerns are, what their issues are, how can we help them find solutions together, help them provide them options uh, of different things they potentially could do, uh, what are funding streams that are open and available to them. And, and again, I think it's really, A, let's help them understand what the issues are, and B, how can we assist them uh, from our perspective to, to help meet some of those, uh, you know, re reducing of emissions. Paula, you're next. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, building on what Stephanie and Barry have both said, um, I'm going to take a little bit different perspective because I feel that when everybody um, supports and shops local, we're actually reducing some of our emissions. Um, and so if we can um, have more variety, perhaps uh, a seasonal of a permanent position for a seasonal farmer's market and artisan's market, it gives more choice. People will stay, they'll shop local, support local, and it's reducing everyone's carbon uh, footprint. In terms of agriculture, um, the nitrogen uh, reductions that the government has mandated, um, I live on a farm, and some of those are gonna be um, very lofty goals because in a Northern climate, we need nitrogen to have crops grow. And uh, farmers are already doing uh, many things to reduce uh, their carbon uh, footprint by winterizing, by not plowing anymore, seeding different crops, um, no till, and I could go on and on. But anyways, um, that's just some of my thoughts. Thank you, Paula. Roger. Uh, thank you. Uh, this brings back memories to me from the Economic Development Days when I was chair on that board when we first started that committee up. Uh, I talked about different business owners doing different things in the downtown core and uh, how expensive it was for the business owners with the rents as unaffordable or however you'd want to say that it really didn't help make ends meet. So we started the Community Improvement Fund through OMAFRA. Uh, back in the day, and I believe now, I could be wrong, but I believe it's a five-year, $10,000 loan that we have out there in the township at this time right now that businesses can take advantage of. And I do believe that uh, in 2023, uh, in the next term of council, we'll be discussing this again, either maybe upping the ante for the, for the business owners or not. And I do believe that we expanded the businesses from, from the stoplights all the way down past uh, the Essel Station, all the way out past, uh, out towards JJ Stewart's and then farther east out past the A&W. So we've, we've made extreme efforts to make this happen. So thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yes, the problem with going last is everything's already been said. So I can only go over once again, but like as Paula said, buying local, having more variety, um, a farmer's market, um, artisan's market, uh, that would, along with uh, more active um, transportation in our community, uh, will reduce emissions. But, and as far as what Stephanie and Barry said as well, uh, having those conversations with the businesses that are currently here, identifying, you know, what can be done. I mean, there's grants and, and, and all sorts of incentives from the government that are available to them to, uh, to, to help reduce uh, carbon, for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, another, we're going to have a few more questions. 
and then it will be the opportunity for you to have your two minutes to uh, wrap things up. We're not trying to stick to any wonderful time frame here, but that is uh, what we're going to do. Barry, you will be first for this question. And the question is, what involvement and relationships do you plan to pursue with First Nations communities to move our region forward on our path to reconciliation? Barry? That is an awesome question and certainly a topic that, that comes near and dear to everybody's mind. Uh, certainly the last few years with lots of uh, uncovering of things that have taken place. Um, I would say at this point, we we have not done a lot. Uh, so it really becomes a great opportunity uh, to educate ourselves, uh, potentially looking at um, meeting and connecting with local um, uh, reserves in our area uh, and, and really finding what, what potentially we could be doing. Honestly, I, I don't know what we could be doing. So I think the first place to start is we would start to have a conversation with some of our local um, local communities and, and see whether there's some uh, some common ground or some things we could be doing to assist and help. Thank you, Barry. Paula. Um, well, I think that um, conversations can begin as early as, as this Friday. Um, and I, I think that, um, you know, reaching out to the Indigenous um, uh, communities in our area and having um, them come in and do some teachings um, the educational portion, it's, it's important. I think it's because we were not taught, um, taught those things in our history classes um, when we went to school. And I think that it become the, the whole conversation um, to heal begins with education because that's how we understand what someone else is going through, what they've been going through. And so that would be my first step is to um, partake in something this Friday uh, and increase my knowledge and understanding of the Indigenous population in our, in our community. Thank you very much, Paula. Roger. I agree. I, I don't think in our actual township we've, we've done enough, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, we did change our procedural bylaw uh, this year to, to do the land acknowledgement, the same as what the county has done uh, to recognize the, the uh, Williams treaties. Um, the other thing that uh, we do when we have the privilege of working with First Nations is any projects that we have around our township that the First Nations are, are the, they have to get involved. We have to get involved with them in order to have, so, so they're aware of what we're doing in the area too. So that happens at the county level also that uh, they get involved and they have a commenting uh, uh, person there that they talk to in order to make the job go forward. It's another check mark in a box. Uh, the other thing that uh, I guess if we're reelected back in again is we could add uh, some First Nations uh, orientation for council too, since, since like you said, this is, this is the beginning of the first steps and we need to do better. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Michael. It's the land awareness is, uh, that's been put into place all over has it, been a wonderful start, but um, I would like to see more involvement um, in all the activities and all the things that we do within our, our, our township, um, all of our events that we have, and, and um, more linking together for our activities and sports um, on the reserves to, to advertise all the different things that we have going on in our township. Um, just, just a lot more togetherness, a lot more connectivity with yes, First Nations would be wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. And Stephanie. This is an area that I, I know personally I do need to do more um, reading and more understanding and more learning. Um, my children are in the school system now and they definitely... Um, are learning things very differently than than we did uh, in a much more understanding and compassionate way and on the 30th this friday like paula says it is a, a day of awareness and um and and thought and <clears throat> excuse me and i think there are lots of resources that exist within the school boards within the county and it, it is it's 
deciding what we do. I, I can't speak to what I would do other than I need to learn more. And then we need to figure out how do we make our township more inclusive and more um, aware of the, the past and move forward together with the First Nations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. One more question, then we will move to your two minute closing, if that's okay with everyone. And this is our final question, Roger. You are at the front of the line. The question is, how would you like to see the building planning and development process improved and supported to streamline the approval process? Roger. That's a tough one. Um, we're not necessarily, so we're a two tier system here and we're part of the county and the county helps determine uh, how things get built in our area. Um, we're trying our best. We've done, done a lot of work behind the scenes at the county uh, to try to streamline everything going forward. Our official plan that we took on for our own township, uh, we, we had a, a consultant go forward with us on that. Uh, we, we talked to uh, county staff to try to change and tweak a few things in our township. Uh, nothing's easy when it comes to planning, that's for sure. Uh, but we do have the open door policy and we try to make it as, as simple as we can, uh, but we don't hold anything back. We'll let you know if we can do it or we'll let you know that we can't do it. Simple as that. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Michael. Yes, yeah, as I'm not current in council and I'm not too familiar with this process, I can't speak um, too much to it, but um, I guess the thing I would reckon, I, I would say is that uh, working with the people who are asking for the building to, to, to streamline this process, to, to figure out where the kinks are and to, to um, smooth them over. Um, but like I said, I'm not on council and I'm not too familiar with this process, so I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stephanie. I, I agree with Michael. I'm, I don't understand the process. I know it's, I, I have not had to encounter it either as a, as a user of the services. Um, again, I go back to my previous comment about streamlining is great, but you can't do it so that it's so fast. And also the other thing is, um, sticking to you know if there's a zoning area why was it zoned that way originally how long has that zoning been in there and should it remain that way for a set period of time i i don't know but in terms of how to streamline it everyone uses that word what does it mean and in this in this context unfortunately i, I don't know other than i do firmly believe that it has to be as transparent as it is and it must be with full engagement of the community. I think that is an incredibly important part and that is what I, I, I firmly believe in. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna build on everybody's again, but I, I will go back to, um, to, to Roger's comment. Um, we, we do have a two tiered process within our township. So we follow the county official plan uh, and then locally, we have our zoning bylaw amendment process, uh, which again is open and transparent and, and, and neighboring people are always involved um, in, in the process. So it can take a little bit of time to work its way through both local council and the, the county process. Uh, but, but I do feel in, in, in watching our team work currently that you know, they are here to open, help, assist, guide people. Uh, people come in with questions, we're there to help them and really help them understand the process because it it can be pretty daunting. Uh, I've learned a lot in the last three and a half years and I do not confess to know it all. So uh, we are lucky to have those helpers. And uh, again, I do feel we do have an open review and we're always looking to open and open to review to look at it, learn and in, enhance where it makes sense to enhance it. Thank you, Barry. 30 second rebuttal or answer, Roger. Thank you. Yeah, I just I just wanted to mention how unique we are in our township here that we have such a, a large agricultural and a rural area. And it just depends on uh, the zoning restrictions that that affect each and every property. So if it's if it's rural, you have a better chance to get a severance. And, and uh, 
that's all I can say to that. We throw throw the cards in and see where they go. Thank, Thank you. you. And Paula, go ahead. Well, just to finish up what everyone else has been saying, um, I, I think sometimes that uh, people, some of these rules are there for a, a reason, uh, you know, floodplain uh, mapping and, uh, you know, commenting from Enbridge and all these other organizations that we have to take um, heed to when we're making these um, planning decisions. And especially when developing things like a subdivision, we, we need to have that um, discussion with the builders. And it, it's nice that it happens at a local uh, level as well, that we can have input. You know, just what people were saying about more roads into subdivisions and, and things like that. It's like those control measures keep our community what it is. And so I think that's a fine balance between not wanting, you know, streamlining and uh, keeping things so that, every, that when where places where places are built, they're built safely. Thank you. Well, that concludes our question portion of our meeting today. The next is to wrap things up with two minutes comment from each candidate, and then we will indeed uh, say goodbye. So, two minutes. Our timer is standing by, and we will indeed start with Michael. I will make mine very short and sweet. I've said everything on my opening statement and um, I wanna thank you for the organizers of this debate. I wanna thank again, all the residents and the candidates who participated in this debate. I believe if we work together and collaborate with the residents of Ashford El Norwood, we can further strengthen and unite our local businesses with the whole community. Thank you again. Thank you, Michael. Stephanie, two minutes, please. Thank you as well to or for the organizers and the residents who and participants on the in the audience and the candidates. Um, it is very nice to be a part of engagement and discussion and figuring out what matters, where the questions have come from, what are the issues of the day and, and what does matter. And um, I have, sorry, anyway, it's been wonderful. I feel that I have said my part. I am getting tired. <laughs> I was skating earlier today and uh, it's been wonderful. And um, thank you very much, Jay Mary Jones and Peter Brokaw the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Stephanie. Barry. Yeah, I think for me, uh, in closing, uh, I would just like to thank everyone for joining us this evening and, and really being actively engaged in this, in this election process. This truly is your community, and we want to know and understand what your needs and concerns are. And, and I think you found tonight, we may not have all the answers tonight, but we will certainly, uh, as a member of council, we'll dig in and, and try and find the best solution that fits for the people in our community. The pandemic certainly disrupted a lot of the great plans that were happening in the community. Uh, we've had to navigate through these headwinds, and I'm really, truly looking forward, uh, if elected, that the next term, uh, that we're going to actually feel some tailwinds behind us and be able to continue to grow this great community. Uh, I've been actively involved in this community uh, since I lived here. I'm a member of the Lions Club. I've been actively involved with the fair, so you certainly can see I'm, I'm actively involved uh, in this community on a, on, a, on a daily and yearly basis. I pride myself on being a good listener a team player bringing a business-like approach to the table. I can lead to keep moving Aspen on Norwood forward and continue to be a growing success. My hope is to continue to serve this community as a counselor again for the next four years, so asking for your support as a counselor in the upcoming election. I urge you to be active and to get out and vote Aspen on Norwood community because this community is for all of us. And if you have not seen me at your door yet, Stay tuned, I'm still coming. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Paula. Yes, thank you. In closing, I would like to thank the organizers of tonight's Zoom debate. To our residents that are watching, my pledge is to be respectful and listen to your ideas and concerns. Our township's growth and sustainability, they're at the top of my list. It's been my honor uh, to be a counselor for Asphodel Norwood and I feel my work and our work is not done. 
I do believe in fiscal responsibility and transparency in government. I think we all do. If re-elected to council, I promise to continue to advocate for prudent use of our tax dollars so we can continue to keep our township vibrant and viable now and in the future. I would like to thank everyone watching tonight and acknowledge the commitment of my fellow candidates. It's a lot. Please take the time to vote in the upcoming election. And I'm asking for your support. Thank you. I'm Paula War. And last but not least, Roger, two minutes, please. Thank you. In closing, as mayor, I vow to continue to serve this community and to serve as a party counselor with a strong voice and to lobby at the federal and provincial level to the best of my ability. And to continue to add to the over $9 million that this community has seen since I started council in 2014 and continue to advocate at all levels for health care and build on the momentum we've created. I want to continue to ensure that the community grows in a balanced way while respecting our roots and the views of our new residents. Continue to build relationships with the developers instead of having ministerial zoning orders passed that prevents the municipalities and the ratepayers' voices from being heard. I want to continue to push economic drivers, such as shop local campaigns to support our local businesses as they are our backbone. I want to continue to meet with potential investors and retail opportunities as I have heard you want. I need more time to continue these conversations. I have the experience and the trust to make this happen. I'm not perfect, and some may say not the most polished or sophisticated mayor they have ever seen, but I challenge you to find one with more sincerity, genuine motives, or heart. I will continue getting things done. I will ensure our team continues to thrive and can focus on what's important, and I will ensure our community is a growing success. Now, at this time, I want to thank you, Jay, for being here with us tonight and the Chamber of Commerce for the invite to this. Please vote in the upcoming election. It's October 24th, it's the last day at 8 p.m. And I would like you to vote for Roger Bonnell for mayor of Asphodel Norwood. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And I gotta say how totally impressed I have been tonight with the passion, with the courtesy, and the respect that all candidates have shown. It's kind of, rejuvenated my whole feeling over uh, election campaigns. And believe me, this is the way it really should be. And I thank each and every one of you for that. That'll wrap up our all candidates get together. I thank each and every one of you. I thank the uh, Peterborough Cortha Chamber for all the work it took to organize these events to uh, Joel and to uh, Lindsay and Olivia who are behind the scenes pushing all the buttons. A lot of preparation uh, goes into that, and I've certainly done my best to make it as fair and uh, compact and everything as possible. So I hope everyone's enjoyed it. So thank you very much. Asphodel Norwood, good luck in the upcoming election. I know you are all here for the right reason. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.